Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with No Budget Reviews, the series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use fluid head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR, but we do have a lot of fun. Well viewers, if it's good enough for Steve McQueen, it's certainly good enough for me. This is a 1998 Ford Puma 1.7 and I'm very, very privileged to have been able to have a go in this. I've wanted to film one for some time and actually I was going to film this car just before uh, Mr Richardson and Furious Driving got his hands on one at the uh, end of last year and also Mr Seabrook from Hubnut also did one. But finally, here we are, many months later, in the sunshine and the wind, which I apologise, uh, just uh, near the south coast. Have a go at this one. Obviously, it's the one everybody wants, a 1.7. car first came out in 1997, and it was made until about the end of 2001, although many were sold into 2002, so not the longest production life. It's amazing this car is just based on a Vermark 4 Fiesta platform. Obviously that's just an evolution of the Mark 3, which then spawned the Mark 5 Fiesta and the Ford car and street car, along with the Puma. One of the ways you can tell that the <laughs> it is of the same platform is the rust round the arches. Yes, they all do that. Of course they do. And uh, this one's actually not too bad. It's, uh, there's, there's a lot worse out there. Hence why you can still put these cars up for no budget reviews money. I think the rear aspect of this car is really, really stunning actually. It's, a, it's, a, it's an attractive car. One thing I am able to do is pop the boot like that. It's got an electronic release as opposed to a Mark III Fiesta, which did not. This car is owned by Jonathan, who's um, Mark 5B Escort you might have seen actually on No Budget Reviews uh, last summer. Funny shaped boot, not the best access I've ever seen and uh, uh, Jonathan's got all this sort of work stuff in here and everything. I'll just see if I can lift this boot carpet up and we'll see if we've got a spare tyre under here, which of course we will do. Oh no, of course we don't. <laughs> it's underneath the, the actual floor of the car like it is on a Mark 345 Fiesta. And uh, that little thing there, I think, helps you get it off. You can fold the rear seats in, in here. Uh, it looks like you can, yes. Uh, although they, they are in one piece, so that does limit practicality somewhat. But if you're driving around in a Puma, I don't think you're that concerned about practicality. You would have just, I don't know, just bought a normal five-door Fiesta if that had been a concern. I do like the exhaust pipe here. And also these... Uh, Rather natty alloy wheels, which are only 15 inches, but they do look rather nice. You can see there's, because this car's red, there's a little bit of a sort of fade on the door handle as well, but you know, it doesn't really matter. That's what matters really. It's funny, loads and loads of bits in here obviously are off a Mark IV Fiesta. Dash is very, very similar, although I do like the dash layout of a Mark IV Fiesta, so no concerns from me there. This car's actually gone round the clock. So one of the things you can tell it's one of the older Fords is because that happens. Only got a five digit odometer. So there we go. It's the uh, time just there. Jonathan's put the original stereo back in this as well. The 6000 CD, um, which I'm sure you've just put in a Fiesta as well or a Ka. Uh, but it looks great with these colour-coded uh, heating and ventilation controls that have got air conditioning. But the best thing about the interior, apart from the Puma logo down there, is this. This aluminium gear lever, cast from a single piece. Today it feels a little bit cold because it's March, 
but uh, I imagine in the summer that could get to be a little bit of a problem. Ooh, we've got four branded things everywhere in here. CFB secret mission documents will go in views because that's what we do around here. Oh yes, yes, it's a, a perfect car for San Francisco based detectives. Who knew? Let's get that out. Ooh. And there's a cup holders and a biro holder which is currently being used. Wonderful. I'm not sure I'd get my secret mission documents in there though, viewers. Another way you can tell this is a Ford from that period is, there we go, the good old Mark, I think three, four, five Fiesta, Escort, Focus, Mirror Switch thing. It went into all kinds of, you know, Jaguars I think as well. And these, uh, these window controls are very familiar as well. Close that to get out of everything. Not a soft touch dash in here because it is just off a Mark IV Fiesta, but never mind. I wonder what this bit is here for. I don't know what that is. I don't think I've got automatic lights and wipers in this car or anything. I do, however, have ho, 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 one of the most satisfying hazard light switches ever. Kind of similar to a Mark II Fiesta, actually, that kind of thing. No leather seats in this one, although I think you could you could actually get leather in certain ones like the Millennium, the Millennium Edition that was only available with uh, a, like a dark blue leather interior and yellow paintwork. I'm not going to sing Robbie Williams because that will get me a copyright strike. And anyway, a lot of you have said you don't like my singing on the channel, so I will not sing today. I think this is a replacement interior interior mirror um, door handles of course I don't know if these are Fiesta ones maybe they're a little bit nicer who knows right I suppose I better try to get in the back viewers I don't know if I'm gonna want to particularly stay there but uh, we shall give it a try because that's what we do okay <clears throat> right it's not looking promising, this view is. Leave that door right. Oh. Oh. Ouch. It's not very really big in here, viewers. Um, I mean, oh, that's, that's got a memory on it. Um, yes. I am in here, viewers, but I'm not very comfortable. My head is, like, wedged right against the roof. And there's no ashtrays in here. Oh. oh well, I don't smoke anyway, do I? What do I need both for? I do have these little compartments here, which I suppose would hold a bottle. There's only room for two at the back of here. There's no um, rear armrest or anything. I um, don't know where the catches are to fold the seat somewhere. But there is a little place here to put the buckle when you uh, do fold the seat, so that means they definitely do. Oh, interesting cost cutting. There's only one uh, map pocket in this car. Right, I think we'll have a look at the engine though, because uh, that is a stronger feature of the car than the amount of room in the back. So like a lot of Fords of the 1990s, quite helpfully, they actually tell you the cubic capacity on there and the amount of power it produces on the sticker. Same on that Mark 5 B Escort, which Jonathan also has. So yes, 1.7 ZTEC S engine, later renamed to the ZTEC SE because ZTEC S became a trim level on the Mark 5 Fiesta. Developing 123 horsepower, 125 PS, 123 horsepower. A lot of the components in here are, are very clearly marked. Ford were very big on this in the 90s, but you knew where everything was. So, brake fluid reservoir, dipstick, power steering fluid, coolant, and uh, all filler cap. Quite tightly packed in here, I must say. Very tightly packed. As far as I remember, this engine has got a cam belt. The 
which uh, was also available in the Puma uh, for the last sort of year or so, that has a chain, and the 1.6, sorry, no, 1.4 was available from 98 to 2000, 1.6 was 2000 to 2001. The 1.6 also has um, a belt rather than a, a chain, which is very strange because they're all basically the same design of engine um, from, what, from what I understand. I love these kind of blacked out sort of headlamps. I don't know if there really was a facelift for the, uh, for the Puma. Obviously you could get different special editions and things like the Thunder and uh, of course there was the racing Puma that had a lot more power than this. But, I mean, this will do very, very nicely for me indeed. There we are, viewers. A driver's dream. Created by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Very, very nice, viewers. Puma looks, sounds and feels like a sports coupe should. Well, I think we're going to have to find out a bit more about that and take it for a drive. One of the things that strikes me straight away about this car is actually how easy it is to drive. Because it's only based on essentially a Mark IV Fiesta platform, it's still got a lot of ingredients which people really loved about those cars when they were new. Nice willing engine. easy to manoeuvre and handle and this lovely IB5 gearbox which went into lots of contemporary Fords as well as from 2003 to 2005 various versions of the MGZR, MGZS and uh, the Rover 25 and 45 this aluminium gear lever though, it feels really, really special. And of course, it's a racing Puma. They did actually have a strengthened version of the gearbox. Lovely, lovely action. There was no automatic Puma available at all, as far as I know. The ride is actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a really, really firm ride in this car. And it's not. It's a, it's a very compliant ride. Someone at Ford didn't just understand how to make a nice, stylish car. They also understood how to make one that rode and handled extremely well too. And this one does. Let's just uh, wait to get out of this junction. There we go. One thing I am noticing though is the driving position is not, not great. Um, I have tried to adjust it the best that I can, but it's still, I don't find this very comfortable, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. To, you want to use this as like a Grand Tour or something. So the Puma was launched with just one engine, this 1.7, which was unique to this car. It was never offered in any of the other cars based on this platform. You can't put this into a Mark 1 car because it won't fit. The, uh, later 1.3 and 1.6 ZTEC Rocam engines um, that were used in the car were developed for it just because <laughs> this sort of 1.4 and 1.6 which would have been ideal for it just didn't fit. However you can put these into a Mark 4 or 5 Fiesta. It's a bit more difficult than a Mark III, although they, they are sort of based on that platform. It's a very heavily modified version of it. The base engine, which was uh, available for it, and that this was from 98 to 2000, was a 1.4 with 95 horsepower. That was replaced with the 1.6 litre, which was in the contemporary Focus, the Mark I Focus. And that developed 105 horsepower, but in this in this car, I think it was a bit more than it was in the Focus actually. But this car, 123 horsepower for 1.7 litre engine, and 
that was up to 253 horsepower with the racing Pima, which had a, a Strengthford gearbox. I don't know why you'd want an auto in a car like this, and Ford didn't know why you would either, which is why they only offered um, a manual. Sounds pretty good. I'm a massive fan of this uh, ZTEC S, ZTEC SE, Sigma, Juratec engine. There's lots of different names it had over the years, and it was only quite recently discontinued. Co developed with Yamaha, it is just nice and smooth. I've driven this in quite a lot of cars now, um, Focuses and Fiestas mainly, but it is superb. And this is the sort of crowning achievement of it, I suppose. This is uh, 1.7. Handling, really, really good. Superb. Really accurate steering. Nice noise from the engine. And just a really good balance of ride and handling. <laughs> Everything they say about this car is completely right. It is use the cliché phrase in the brochure, a driver's dream. Not sure why the uh, camera mount is moving around so much for you, it's just the way it goes on this channel unfortunately. This is no budget reviews after all. The Millennium and Thunder editions were supplemented by something called the uh, Puma Black, which I think a friend of mine had many years ago, but that car unfortunately succumbed to rust like so many of these do. Obviously the first thing when you're looking at one of these, if yours is one of the engines with a cam bell, make sure that's been done. And also make sure that it's not chronically rusty. That really should be quite obvious from things like past MOTs and just visually checking the car. I really don't want to give this car back to Jonathan. I, I, I want to keep driving it. Somehow the seat has got a little bit easier for me to, um, to slip into. And I'm just enjoying this so much. I remember driving a Mark V Fiesta many, many years ago, uh, which just had a 1.25 version of this engine in it. But just being an absolute joy to drive. I mean, the car at the time, uh, a 2002 model was made, was very, very old. A lot of the components did sort of date back to the Mark III Fiesta that was launched in '89. But this car reminds me of the way that that drove. It's got a lot more power as well. So it's just a sort of extraordinary thing. It, it, main problem is actually finding one of these because there's just not a lot of them around but wow I have enjoyed myself viewers I've enjoyed myself very much so viewers the Ford Puma or at least the one that came before the uh, modern one is this a car that you should consider with your Honda budget of up to a thousand pounds well it certainly is I'll be issues with this car are well documented mainly corrosion unfortunately and uh, just a bit of neglect really they haven't particularly been that expensive in the past I i'm quite surprised that you know these cars are still in no budget reviews territory but they are just tremendous fun um i think actually i liked it a lot more than i thought i would Anyway, thanks ever so much indeed once again for watching this episode of No Budget Reviews. Thanks again to Jonathan for uh, supplying the car. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Like this video and leave a comment below. And uh, we'll see you again soon for more inexpensive automotive advice.